Hi, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be going over another map problem. I went over one of these a couple of days ago in my last video, so I'll leave a link for that in the description below. But Matt is just the entrance exam you have to do if you want to get into Oxford. This problem here comes from the 2019 paper and it's problem 1a. We want to know how many real solutions are there to x cubed minus 300x equals 3000. Okay, so if you want to have a go at this problem, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself. And I'm going to jump straight into a solution. <laughs> Okay, so the way we're going to solve this problem is by drawing a graph. So I've introduced this function here, f of x equals x cubed minus 300x. And essentially what we want to do is find the number of real values x for which this guy here equals 3000. Okay, so let's sketch this thing here. It's quite uh, clear to work out what the roots are. We can just factor this. It's x, x squared minus 300. So that's just x, then x minus square root of 300 whatever that is, times x plus the square root of 300. Okay, we don't really need to go any further than that. We could perhaps factor out a 10 or something like that. Um, but we don't need to worry about that. But we have f um, of x, and we know it's three roots. One is going to be negative uh, root 300, one is going to be positive root 300, and one's going to be zero. Okay, what are the turning points of f? Well, uh, if we just differentiate f and set it equal to zero, well, f prime of x is just 3x squared minus 300. And to work out the turning points, we set the derivative equal to zero. So suppose this equals zero, then we can just cancel the threes. So just dividing three by three, and then this 300 basically becomes 100. So we have x squared minus 100 equals zero. So then that, of course, means that x equals plus or minus 10. Okay, so f of x, we've uh, sort of factored it out, and we've also found that the turning points are at plus or minus 10. Uh, let's clear up the whiteboard, and we'll continue. Okay, so we're now able to draw a quick sketch of what f of x looks like. So if we have our xy plane like so. Now we know what cubic sort of look like. They look like that. This is a positive cubic, i.e. the coefficient uh, of x cubed sorry, here is a positive number. It's 1. So it's going to go off to positive infinity when x goes to infinity. And as x goes to negative infinity, it's going to go to negative infinity. And we know what its roots are. Okay, so it looks something like this. Okay, where this thing here is minus root 300, this guy here is zero, and this thing here is positive root 300, like so. And now we know that this point here, where f of x has a turning point, is just minus 10. Okay, and this point here is 10. We don't actually care about this 10. We only care about this minus 10 here because we want to know can f of x, or how many times does f of x equal 3000? Well, if you plug in uh, minus 10, i.e. compute f of minus 10, we're just plugging it into this guy here. We get minus 10 cubed, which is just minus 1,000, then minus 300 times minus 10. Minus 300 times minus 10 is positive 3,000. So here is 3,000 minus 1,000, which is 2,000. So f of minus 10 is 2,000, which tells us that this point here corresponds to 2,000. Oopsie. Now, of course, uh, uh, big brain time, 2,000 is less than 3,000. So 3,000 is going to be somewhere here, roughly. So we can clearly see the graph y equals f of x only ever intersects the line y equals 3,000 once at that point there. So not twice, not three times, not an infinite number of times, just once um, at that point there. And that's the number of solutions, or real solutions, to this equation here is 1. And uh, it also, I guess one point I should say, this applies to any cubic any cubic or any odd polynomial will always have at least one solution because as you go to positive infinity, you're going to get to infinity and as you go to negative infinity, you're going to get negative infinity and um, therefore, uh, by the intermediate value theorem, no matter which, you know, we have 3000 in this case, but if you made that 42 pi or any number you wanted, you'd always be able to find at least one real solution. Anyway, that's me waffling on. I hope you have enjoyed this problem. Thanks for watching. And if you are new here and enjoyed this video, please be sure to like the video and subscribe if you want to see more maths videos and fun things like that. Anyway, I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.